No other king could vanquish the war horse or silence the warrior's rage while riding the lowly back of a donkey. No other king could break the dominion of darkness, the tyranny of evil, with a reign of grace and a kingdom of peace. No other king could give his life for the redemption of rebels, his wealth to welcome the outcast. Jesus is that king, the king of glory, son of the living God. Not just another king, not just another prophet, not just another teacher. He was the one the world had been waiting for. The one to deliver us from captivity, the son of David and Abraham's chosen seed. He is the goal of the Mosaic law, Yahweh in the flesh. He is the one to establish God's reign and rule, to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, freedom to the prisoners, and proclaim good news to the poor. This Jesus was the creator come to earth and the beginning of a new creation. He embodied the covenant, fulfilled the commandments, and reversed the curse. This Jesus is the Christ that God spoke of to the serpent, the one prefigured to Noah in the flood, the one promised to Abraham, the one guaranteed to Moses before he died, the one promised to David during his reign, the one revealed to Isaiah as a suffering servant, the one predicted through the prophets and prepared for through John the Baptist. He is the Father's Son, Savior of the world, and substitute for our sins. More loving, more holy, and more wonderfully terrifying than we ever thought possible. He is our Jesus, and there is no other king like him. He is our God, our glory, our victorious Savior. There is no other king like him. There is no other king.
Good morning, True Light family. I'm so glad you've chosen to join with us online once again. And I'm going to continue what we started last Sunday, this series of more than. We talked at the beginning about what ifs versus God ifs. Jesus talked about worry, and it's something that we all are familiar with. And so I encourage you to not just think about the what ifs, but include God right in the process. God, if this happens, if God, if this, and then to even go further than that. But let's read the verse that we talked about last week is Matthew chapter six, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? So we came to this conclusion that life is more than food and clothes. Life is more than our basic physical needs. It's an important truth because it really helps us line up our priorities in life and how we're going to respond and what we're going to do, where we're going to put our energies. And we often ask God to respond to our needs, right? We come to him with our list and say, God, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. I need you to do this. But how often do we believe God to act and do something that we're not even sure what we need yet, but we're believing him for the future. We're believing him for the unknown. We're gonna talk about that today. I asked you at the end of last week to begin to ask and then imagine what God could do in various situations. It was our sneak preview into this time together this week. Here's what you need to know, and this is so important. God can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. Now, why do I need to know this? Why do you need to know this? It's actually really simple. It's because we set limits. We set expectations that often have limits. So we get to a certain point and say, oh, I'll get here. Because when we get to a certain point, we say, well, that would be impossible. But yet we serve a God that can do the impossible. We're gonna look at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. Paul's writing a church to the believers in Ephesus, and he kind of stops midway through writing and does this spontaneous prayer. (laughs) I encourage you to do spontaneous prayer. When God puts a situation on your heart, brings a person to your mind, stop what you're doing and pray. Remember, prayer is just talking to God. Don't overcomplicate it. It's not about, uh, about a certain style or certain words. He wants you to be authentic and be yourself. So, so do that when he puts somebody or a situation on your heart. Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 16, it says this, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now this might seem like a basic question to ask after we read this prayer, but why do we pray for specific things? Well, it seems like a no-brainer, right? Like, I pray because there are specific things going on in my life and I I need answers to them. I need God to to intervene. I need him to do something. And, And it's sometimes because we are also praying for the opposite to happen, that there is something that can happen or it is happening or it can happen. And so we don't want certain things to happen. And I think Paul's doing that in this verse. Let's look at a couple of these pieces. He says to, for them to be strengthened, that God may strengthen you. Well, why would someone need to be strengthened? Because they could have moments of weakness. What could that weakness lead to? Discouragement. I know for myself, even over these last few weeks, when I don't feel good, when I'm down physically, that affects me on every level, emotionally spiritually, mentally, and I can feel down and just not motivated. I don't want to do anything. I, I, it's hard to, to think. It's hard to pray. It's hard to stay focused upon what God wants me to. Now, the next, here's another one. It says, Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Again, Paul's praying that this happens because why? Because the opposite can happen or maybe is happening in this church, that they can lose faith 
And sometimes we lose faith and, and, and have faith in our member, it says in our hearts through faith. Because we keep we have trouble keeping Jesus at the number one spot in our life through faith. We'd rather return to a system where we do stuff and we earn it and then we get it. And yet that's not the way that Jesus wants to dwell in our heart through faith. That we believe in him, that we believe that what he's done for us is enough. <clears throat> that he's shown us grace. He has forgiven our sins. And we don't need to do anything. We get to do things. We respond to that love and that grace that we've been shown. Here's another one in this prayer. It says that we may have power, if you read, read a little further, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. We can lose power to do this. Well, what's the opposite of power? Here's a couple words. Inability, helplessness, incompetent, hopelessness, ineffective, incapable. And we can start to feel these feelings and we start to revert back to a place where we've been and we don't want to go there again. And so Paul's are praying that these things would not happen. Here's at the end of the verse, it says this, that we would know this love. And if you read a little bit further, it says that you may be filled. Well, what's the opposite of those two action words there? To know. So when we don't know something, what? We forget. And this isn't something that overnight you wake up one day and say, oh, I forgot who God is. But it's a, sometimes a slow fade, a slow trickle, a slow backsliding away from that. And it says that you may be filled. And what happens when we're not being filled? We start to feel empty. I don't know if you've ever had all of these feelings happen, but I know I have. And sometimes it's different, meaning that some of them are, are happening all at the same time, combinations of them, combinations that we would never want. And Paul's praying against discouragement, losing faith, helplessness, hopelessness, forgetting that God loves us, and that feeling of emptiness. He's praying for this church in Ephesus, and I'm praying for you the same way today that this would not happen, that the is and the can will not happen. And I want you to understand that. I want you to pray that way, that praying against the is and the can, because God is and he can. I'm gonna say that one more time. Praying against the is and the can, because God is and he can. God's love and power our source that's limitless. It will not run out. God is capable to answer our prayers easily. Do you believe that? That God can answer your prayers easily. He can supernaturally move on behalf and transform any situation. We need to be encouraged of that. And the how-to of this prayer is simply right at the end of this verse. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. It says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. We finished last week with that verse. Here's what some of the other versions say about this word. Here's other words from other versions. I love this. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably, exceedingly, abundantly, infinitely, far more abundantly, super abundantly, than all we ask or imagine. That should just well up faith right there, that, that God can do even more, way beyond what we ask or imagine. So what's the practical how-to? How do we apply this verse? Grasping the truth from this prayer, that we're praying against the is and the can, because God is and he can. The first really simple how-to is we have to ask. Don't overcomplicate prayer. Prayer is just talking to God. Now, be, be specific. We, we, we can sometimes pray like, God, help them out. God, do something. Um, and I've prayed those prayers too when I don't know very specifically. But if I take time to really allow God to weigh on my heart, I, I, I can begin to feel faith rise up and well up. That I pray for specific things. Let our mind wander in faith. Believe in God to do certain things. And you'll begin to pray very specifically. And sometimes you don't even know why. You might start to pray for somebody for depression or discouragement or, or, or finances. And you don't even know why because God's praying through you. Now remember, this is, this is not a list of demands. Uh, during our week of prayer, someone prayed for the Buffalo Bills. 
Now, I am a Buffalo Bill fan, and so we just need two more games. But I'm not so sure how <laughs> concerned God is about scores of football games. Maybe he is. Uh, that's a whole other debate we could have another time. But this is not about a list of demands. This is allowing God to pray through us, to allow faith to rise up, and allowing his heart, his truth, his ways to permeate our prayers. That we start to pray in a way, believing that verse we just read, that he can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. But we have to start somewhere. Faith will rise in our heart. Faith will rise in our prayers. And I believe that God will respond. Prayer is so important. It's a vital part of a Christian's life. So again, what we've been saying, you, we're going to pray against the is and the can because God is and he can. I know for my own life, prayer has kind of been a journey. There's times in your life where it's really strong. There's times in your life where it becomes a little bit more mundane and, and, and you struggle. And there's different times where you pray for different things in different ways. I know that when I was still single, that someone along the way, a pastor or somebody, encouraged me to pray for my future wife. Now, that might seem like a strange thing. I'm, I'm praying for someone and I never even met them. Well, that's sometimes what prayer is. Praying and believing for something we don't see yet, something that hasn't happened yet. And so I began to do that. I wrote in the back of my journal a list of things that I was praying for in a wife, and I began to pray for my wife before I even met her. I didn't have a name, I didn't have a location, or I didn't know very any details. But I can tell you that God did immeasurably more than I asked or imagined. I know that same journey happened with True Light Church. I remember vividly praying and saying, God, what do you want me to do? And it's a weird kind of spot to be in in life to say, God, what do you want me to do? And not have any other direction than that. To say, God, do whatever you want. And, and I can tell you once again that God has done immeasurably more than I asked or imagined. And he's far from being done. I pray this in my children's life. I pray for their future spouse. I pray for their futures now in advance. And I'm even encouraged and challenged by these verses to continue to do that. To not give up and to believe that God can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. I want to pray for you this morning as we wrap up that God will do some very specific things in your life. Let's pray right now. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this time as a church. I know last year and this year have already been very different than most of us have ever experienced. God, you're still on the throne, you're still in control, and we can still trust you with every single aspect of our life. I pray for the person listening this morning that heard that list and identified with one or maybe more of those things, hopelessness, emptiness, discouragement, and I pray right now that they would feel them being lifted out of that in the name of Jesus. I pray for the future of True Light Church. God, I pray that our church will be a place, a refuge, where people come and find hope and healing in Jesus. Lord, we believe you for people to have their mind and heart open to the truth of your word that they will come and repent of sins. They will see their lives transformed. There will be physical healings, mental healings, spiritual healings, emotional healings because of your power on display. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. I pray that you continue to get all the glory and the honor for what you want to accomplish. God, help us this week to begin to start a habit of praying very specifically in faith. Help our minds to wander in a good way, believing you to do the impossible. In Jesus' name, amen. Now this verse ends with 
kind of the direction that we're going to go for next week. It says right after this, then all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Huh. We get to be part of this process. Verse 21 says, To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. God wants to show that he can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine through our life. It leads us to our next chapter. If this life is more than physical needs, if God can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, then that must mean we are more than. strength is gone you're the one who calls me on you are the life you are the fight that's in my soul oh your resurrection power burns like fire in my heart when waters rise i lift my eyes up to your throne
this life We will not bow to sin or to shame We are defiant in your name You are the fire that cannot be tamed You are the power in our veins Our Lord, our God 